Now, according to science, something has to move from one place to another in any direction for it to be called work. Work is as important in science as it is in our lives. In science, work is related to energy and power and we can understand several natural phenomena by understanding the scientific concept of work. So let's begin with understanding in more detail the science behind work. Now like I mentioned earlier, any object has to be physically moved in order for work to get done. So for example, if you push a pebble lying on a flat surface, the pebble will move as long and as far as you push it. You exert a force on the pebble and the pebble gets displaced and we can say that work is done. Similarly, if we have a boy pushing a trolley, the trolley moves through a certain distance as you can clearly see here. In this case, when the boy is pushing the trolley, he's actually applying force on it. And due to this force, the trolley is moving in the forward direction. Now by moving in the forward direction, the trolley is going from one position to another position, which means that it is getting displaced. Now since force applied on the trolley by pushing it can cause the trolley to get displaced, we can say that work is getting done. So when defining work, we have to consider both the force applied on the object as well as its consequent displacement. And so there are two conditions for work to be considered done. First, that force should act on the object. And second, the object must be displaced. Now, if any one of the above two does not happen, then work done will be equal to zero, meaning that work is not considered done. For example, if you're applying force on a huge rock, but it's not moving, the work done by you would still be zero you would most probably be exhausted and feel like you've done so much work. But work done would be zero, scientifically speaking. Got it? Good. Now, to define work and understand how it's calculated in physics, we look at a situation in which the force and displacement due to force are known to us. So let's look at an example. As you can see here, a block is placed on a frictionless horizontal surface. This block is acted upon by a constant force F because of which it moves through a distance S in a straight line in the direction of force. Now, work can be defined as the work done in moving a body is equal to the product of force exerted on the body and the distance moved by the body in the direction of the force. So, the work done by this force, that is W, is equal to the product of the magnitude of the force applied and the distance through which the body moves, which is S. Now, mathematically, W is equal to F into S, where again, F is the magnitude of the force applied, S is the displacement of the body, and W is the work done on it by the force. Now, in the definition of work, and pay careful attention to the part where it said that we consider the distance moved by the body in the direction of the force. This is an important part because both force and displacement are quantities that have magnitude as well as direction. Now to fully describe the force acting on an object, we must describe both the magnitude and direction of the force. For example, we have a ball kept on the table. You want to move the ball, but you don't know where to apply the force to actually make it move. Now, if you apply force downwards, it won't move at all. So force can be applied to either lift it up or move it sideways. So if you're lifting it up, you will apply a force in the upward direction and even the displacement of the ball will be in the same direction. Similarly, 
When you want to move it towards the left or towards the right, you have to apply a force in the respective direction. With that, we come to an end of discussing the role of force in determining the work done. Also, the SI unit of force is Newton or capital N, which is named after Isaac Newton. Now let's consider displacement. The SI unit of displacement, as you know, is meters denoted by a small m. Now, let's look at another important term that we use in our daily lives. And it has a specific significance in the world of science too. Well, this term is energy. Energy is what is keeping the whole universe alive and running. Right from the rotation and revolution of the planets to sustenance of life and other regular activities on Earth like driving a car, playing sports, etc. Everything, everything requires energy. I'm sure you all have seen how even the master blaster Sachin Tendulkar has a secret for his energy. The demand for energy is ever increasing. That's because to do any work, we need energy. In our case, we get our energy from food. So if you do not eat, you cannot play, walk, run, or even study. So if the work you're doing is more strenuous, then you need more energy. So let's try and define energy. It is actually very simple. It is the capacity to do work. An object having a capability to do work is said to possess energy. And this energy exists in a lot of forms around us. There is chemical energy, mechanical energy, electrical energy, heat energy, among other forms. Now these forms of energy can be used in a number of ways. And what's more, energy can be converted from one form to another. Now let's see how this happens. When a fast moving cricket ball hits a stationary wicket and the wicket is thrown away. So the ball basically hits the wicket with a force and causes it to displace. This means that the ball has the capacity to do work. Similarly, if a hammer is raised and brought down, it can drive a nail into wood or a wall. Again, the hammer has the capacity to do work. Now, if you press a balloon that is filled with air, its shape will change. Let me show you. You can press it in different ways and the shape will change every time. However, if you press it really hard, it bursts and produces a blasting sound. So, what exactly happens when energy is exerted? Well, in all these cases, energy is being transferred from one body to another. Now, the object which does the work loses energy and the object on which the work is done gains energy. But how does an object with energy exactly do work? Well, here's how. An object that possesses energy can exert a force on another object. When this happens, energy is transferred from the former to the latter. The second object may move as it receives energy and therefore do some work. Maybe with a few exceptions. This means that any object that is energy can do work. In other words, the amount of energy possessed by a body is equal to the amount of work it can do when the energy is released. Now the unit of energy is therefore the same as that of work, which is joules, also represented by a capital J. Now, one joule is the energy required to do one joule of work. A larger unit of energy is kilojoule and is denoted by kj. Now, one kilojoule is equal to thousand joules. 
now. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.